I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. Last time, the Clock King had the dynamic duo trapped in a big unbreakable hourglass sitting on a round pedestal with sand dropping on them fast. They need to figure something out quick before they suffocate. I have an idea, Robin. It might work. You slam yourself against your side of the glass, and I'll do the same against mine. Hurry! We'll knock ourselves senseless so it won't be scary when we can't breathe. Wow, I did not see that coming. What a remarkable and unforeseen solution. Unfortunately, the glass didn't break, so they can still run out of oxygen. Squirrel cage. But that's it, Robin. Start running around like a squirrel in a cage. Sadly, their momentum carried them all the way to the river. Before anyone realized what happened, they drifted out to sea and were never seen or heard from again. It still didn't break, but we changed scenes and somehow they got out. I know I'm intruding on two very busy officials. Intruding, Mrs. Cooper? My door is always open to a lady as charming as yourself. And we, uh, we do have Bruce Wayne in common, don't we? Upstanding citizen. Well, Bruce is really the reason I'm here. You see, today is his birthday. She's there to invite them to a surprise party she's throwing for him this evening. They're only too happy to agree. It's nice to see Aunt Harriet having a bigger role, and it's going to keep getting bigger for a while. She's a character you can't help but love, but so far we know precious little. That's starting to change, and it's a good change. Uh... Excuse me, Mrs. Cooper. My direct line to Batman. Oh, how exciting! You know, I hear that same sound coming from Bruce's study all the time. Isn't it a remarkable coincidence? Gotta love her. I talk of him and Robert so often to Bruce and Dick. What in the world Gotham City would ever have done without them? I don't... Oh... <laughs> I don't mean to discredit your fine department. No need gentlemen. to apologize, Mrs. Cooper. We know how inept we are and how they have to save our butts all the time. We are all forever in debt to the dynamic duo, so intrepid and yet so incognito. He didn't break the fourth wall. How disappointing. Seven-ish, then? Yes, indeed. Seven-ish. On the dot. Bye. Uh, Chief, on the dot means the exact opposite of ish. Have you been skipping those English lessons again? Bye. Goodbye. What about Batman? He wanted to tell us that he had successfully escaped the vicious trap set for him by the Clock King. But that evil adversary is still at large, and no doubt planning something even... Eviler? More monstrous. I like my word better. Uniform? Check. Everything ready for the big job, Your Highness. Mr. Sure Tingley. Everything, including this box and its contents. If only Batman knew what was in this box. It's the key to the door on the hourglass. He checks in on the clock he sold to Aunt Harriet. Oh, Alfred, look at what I got Bruce for his birthday. He'll be so pleased. He will indeed, madam. It's a rare antique. There are very few clocks left like it in the world today. It's beautiful, madam. I'm sure Mr. Wayne will be most pleased. Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne, the millionaire? No, Bruce Wayne, the cab driver. But what does he want with Bruce? Because he has a fine collection of old antique pocket watches, which we are going to appropriate in a few minutes. Let's go. Naturally, but there's a problem. But that clock on the latest piano, that's the one that I thought that you wanted me to put the little funny button on. It is. The control for the knockout gas. One whiff, the butler will be out cold, and the antique pocket watches will be all mine. Oh, no, no, not that button. I mean the button. You? 
You mean the atomic energy directional control switch? Yeah, the atomic science thing button. Well, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is is supposed to be in this box. He opened the box to check and the knockout gas rendered him and everybody else in the room unconscious. Not in that clock. That's what worries me. I, I think I made a mistake. Mistake? You just pulled the biggest boneheaded blunder of the century. Now, if we don't get the Windman Club back from Bruce Wayne's mansion in short order, our big job will be ruined. There isn't a minute to lose. Ah. So now they have to invade Wayne Manor to get the clock back. Millie, Millie, you can be of great help to me right now. Me? Gee, what do I do? Stay here and keep your eyes open, but stay out of sight. Oh, I'll certainly try, if I can remember all that. Write it on a note and pin it to her sleeve. Then she'll probably get confused and eat it. In the bat cave, while they brush the sand out of their bat briefs, they try to figure out who Mr. Smith is. King Lynch. Mm, I sure hope so. Boy, what I'd give to know where Clock King is right at this very minute. Meanwhile, up in the Wayne living room... That's the second variation on that gag that we've done in this story, guys. And it's still not funny. Usually the show can pull off these tired old jokes, but for some reason this time it just isn't working. <laughs> this stuff happens to Alfred a lot. They grab the clock, but Clock King does something very out of character and breaks his timetable so he can get the pocket watches now instead of later. We play meanwhile in the back cave, meanwhile in the living room for way too long until Aunt Harriet comes downstairs. Good afternoon. Bruce's birthday clock! Shh. What are you doing here? Who are you? Your Highness. Dick Grayson's aunt. I think we better take her along with us. Alfred! That was an emergency alarm that Alfred activated. They take the bat poles upstairs. Holy hijackers. Clock King in a second hand robbing Wayne Manor. Why the brazen? Watch what you say. After all, we're not supposed to know them. And it's a good thing nobody heard that conversation, so your secret is safe. Don't worry. Unhand my aunt! Sorry, gentlemen. We hope to make a safe getaway after lifting a few baubles from this handsome residence. Perhaps this sweet lady will provide that safety. You can take your baubles, but you're not taking Mrs. Cooper out of this house as a hostage. We may have a difference of opinion there, Mr. The clock. I think I'm going to faint. That was the shortest fight sequence ever. They rescued the pocket watches, but he got away with the birthday clock. Dick wants to follow up on where the clock came from and why they were so interested in it, but Bruce insists they need to track down Mr. Smith. As usual, Bruce wins, so they waste six months searching through every person in the city named Smith. By the time they got anywhere, Clock King had already looted the whole city and retired to Tahiti, where he spent the rest of his days trying to teach Millie the joys of two-syllable words. A blacksmith and a big clock crime. A blacksmith and a big clock crime. Blacksmith, big clock. Blacksmith and a big clock crime. Blacksmith and a big clock crime. Blacksmith and a big clock crime. Blacksmith. There's the blacksmith. Yes, Robin. And every hour that mechanical marble brings his hammer down to strike the anvil in time with the clock. A search through their database of big clocks turned up this one. Batman Logic says Clock King is going to put something on the anvil so it gets hit at 5 o'clock. So the objective must be the building facing the tower, a building with a heliport on the roof. His real objective must be the heliport. Someone or something of value must be arriving at the heliport at exactly 5 o'clock. Maybe Commissioner Gordon can provide us with an answer. Piff! Commissioner Gordon didn't know when a foreign ruler was visiting the city. Okay, it turned out to be the Joker, but the principle remains. Commissioner Gordon is not a good source for what's going on in the city. Yes, there is one due at that time. A helicopter from the nuclear laboratory of the Gotham Institute of Technology. 
What? Two noted physicists will be delivering a cesium clock to the ASC Corporation. Uh, purely routine. We've taken no special precautions. I'm guessing Bonnie put that list together for him. So, a cesium clock. So what? It's frequently used in regulating satellite tracking or in space probes. Holy liftoff. And I read recently that a cesium clock is being delivered to the amalgamated communications corporation for use in their tracking facilities. That means that it's the same clock that's being delivered by helicopter today at five o'clock. Same clock, same question. So what? But what use would a cesium clock be to Clock King? Lots of use, Robin. He could be holding the ASC up for ransom because a cesium clock is worth at least a million dollars. Ah, the holy grail of Batman villaindom. A million dollars. We haven't heard that for a while. Nice to have it back. What a setup. But why do you want me here, Clock King? Any man wants a beautiful woman to decide, Millie, at the climax of his career. Gee. Get the uniform. Any man wants a beautiful woman in a cl <laughs> Family friendly. We've got a minute to lose. Now at five o'clock, when the clock strikes five, these figures will start to move. That hammer will come down on the box and trigger the knockout gas across to the heliport. It won't affect us in our gas masts. We transfer to the heliport and fly the cesium clock out on the helicopter. Simple. Knockout gas from the box is going to shoot across the street and incapacitate the people on the helipad and in the helicopter. And for that, he needs an atomic control whatchamadoodle. Color me lost. No. It can't be true. You're dead. You have to be dead. Maybe we're living on borrowed time. But now, it's roundup time. Time for the big fight scene. In case you don't recognize the music, that's the Anvil Chorus. I was going to play it over this sequence as a joke. They beat me to it. Did Batman just punch that guy in the please don't hit me there? There's the Anvil. Where's the box with the atomic knockout gas? It shouldn't hurt too much since his head made a metallic sound. How do they do that? They have an occasional miss, but 99% of the time they make these old gags work. It's just part of the magic of this show. Great job, Batman. I couldn't have done better myself. Thank you, Chief O'Hara. That's high praise indeed. Batman is also the world's best liar. Gordon says they're off to a surprise party for Bruce Wayne, so Batman and Robin take off to work on their surprise faces. I don't get this Clock King. There's not much to him. He likes clocks and money and monkeys around with one to get the other. Big deal. All Batman had to do was outsmart him, and when you get right down to it, it wasn't that hard. I hope next time we get a villain who actually hints at some genuine menace. I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. 